Hello, my name is Alexandre Gamelis. I'm with uh, Intbal Portugal. And today we're going to show you a little video, a little tour um, of our neighborhood here in Porto, Portugal. This is a brilliant idea that uh, Intbal headquarters have to ask the, the chapters to provide uh, these short videos with, with short tours um, of, of things they know, things they like, and uh, hopefully you will like you like them as well. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to go on uh, Google and I'm going to show you a little bit of a special neighborhood here in Porto, which I think is very interesting uh, architecturally and it's a, it's a very it's kind of a small segment of town. So here we go. Share screen. Okay. So this is Porto. Uh, in a nutshell, the ocean here on the left and the river. Uh, as we zoom in, we can see the medieval part of town over here. This is the part that every tourist knows, every tourist goes to. <clears throat> and it's sort of, uh, as, as, you, as you expect, small, very small um, uh, lots. The small small houses, very narrow streets, and everything is kind of cobbled together very organically. <clears throat> this was the town, the the, the most dense dense and, and uh, urban uh, part of town up until the, the end of the nineteenth century, as the industrial revolution came and things started growing. The town started growing north, especially north and east. Um, we're going to go to east now, and as you can see, as we move uh, eastward around this area, you can see that the streets become a little wider and more regular, and with different, with, with better, <laughs> not, I wouldn't say better, more defined geometric patterns. Uh, one such neighborhood, which is very interesting, which is what I wanted to show you today, is somewhere here. It's interesting to see um, once we once we arrive here that you have this radial pattern of streets radiating from this place, but also from uh, from from this area, for example. You have different radius there and there, and then you have some perpendiculars. It's kind of disorienting to <laughs> walk uh, here because nothing is really uh, straight or perpendicular. However, what's interesting is that this uh, sort of area where I'm um, uh, pointing my mouse right now was all done at the same time. Essentially, uh, if we go back, I, I know it's very, very hard to see, but uh, this is from the 18th century and everything was a field, basically. There was a field, uh, there were <clears throat> it was country basically. There was a, there were a few bridges. It's still an area with lots of water and the groundwater now. But there it used to be there there, there were streams running around the bridges and, and so on and so forth. And so it was a very rural area up to the to the end of the nineteenth century actually. <clears throat> and so if we go further up, we see this building here this was let's call it the country house it was built in the 19th century early 19th century uh, the country house and the grounds were basically let's say from from that house up to this point down and then up down here so you can see it was kind of a it was a, a it, was, it was a country house with with a fairly large grounds with, with trees and, and whatnot um, this was bought in 1882 by a merchant by as the city started growing by a by a developer who divided it in streets and so today we can see this building which we do that you see it's still still kind of a classical building um, 
from that from that period it's very it's it's now the local, local council it's still painted in pink which used to be the color uh for for let's say for palaces and so on because it's, it was a it was a small private palace if we can call it like that or or a, a manor house now i wanted to go into street view but it's not letting me for a reason let's try again street view okay here we go so yeah this building right now has no doesn't have a lot of interest inside but outside it was um, you have to think that 150 years ago something like that there was nothing else here but this house everything else was was country with trees with farmlands and so on and so forth so let's get out now then what happened is this developer then took it and and built all these streets and all, all these lots sold them and then oh let's get all these labels out okay and so people could uh, could build their houses and houses were built from you know, from the late from the late 19th century up to the early 20th century uh, in a sort of style that's been developed uh, and and it is is not really a particular style or it's more of a, a oat developer if you want to call it but it has a lot of interesting examples a lot of charming examples so we can let's start here with our little main palace so here we are we are on the side of the manor house and all of these streets are called they have they're named after dukes <laughs> uh, and it's interesting because the developer wanted to to give this new area a kind of um, elite or or uh, patrician uh, naming so that it would attract people who wanted to to be associated with that and so he named it after all these uh, aristocrats who had participated in the um, war against Napoleon. And so we have Duke de Saldana, Duke de Palmela, Duke de Terceira. We have all these all these guys who were aristocrats, but of a very particular uh, type who, who had uh, fought in these in these wars. And then the last remaining street was named after the developer <laughs> himself. So he, in fact, he was uh, placing himself along uh, along these uh, sides uh, with these people um all the most of the trees are uh, the streets are lined with trees which is also very interesting um, and you can see that there wasn't really a concern for uh, for urban detail or anything because the trees are simply stuck into the into the into the street into, into the paving of the street <clears throat> which is also it's kind of interesting it makes for a very bumpy road but it's it is it is what it is and the street and the trees are all mature so it's, it's quite beautiful uh, and and so all of these streets were lined with the trees in order to create this sort of upscale uh, neighborhood which would attract the new bourgeoisie which in fact it did and so we see here we start some examples this is not a great example because it's been uh, completely redone inside. You can see sort of um, the style of, of of stone and and the type of house was very much um, was very much the same. And it was based on a, a lot of it was based on catalogs. Um, so you would have uh, you know you have the stone the stone arch and with um, impost and everywhere it, it would be it would be the same. They, they would just take it and do it the same. They, they weren't really concerned about reinventing the wheel. On on this one, for example, it's it's a it's a it's again it's it's a three bay house, but the door is on the side, um, and then the, the details are very similar. In fact, the sizes of windows, heights, widths, etc., are are very very similar, and they they were adapted to to the site as need be, but without a lot of changes. And that's what really creates the variety and at the same time the, the 
consistency in, in, in the neighborhood. <clears throat> now, of course, um, a lot of examples, a, lo a lot of buildings have been demolished and replaced, but let's focus on the earlier buildings first. Now, this is a, uh, actually, this is a, a great example here. These two. So that is, I don't know if you can see, but that's actually an entry door. <laughs> and look at the proportion of this of this door. It's really quite something. So in this house, you would have um, sort of a, an intermediate uh, basement level, which is was really very tall with these sort of tall windows with grates. And then you have a very tall first ceiling, and the, and your entry door would reflect all that. So it's really a massively high a door with a transom. The transoms are typically uh, decorated with <clears throat> with ironwork, and you, because it's the end of the of the nineteenth century, it's already cast iron, which is being used. And so that house is very interesting because of that, because it has a very very tall window with with these proportions. And the windows, I suspect, they've been transformed lately because they're the lights are very divided. Usually, they're they're big. The other, the example next to it is interesting because uh, I'm not sure they were built at the same. They were probably built at the same time because they were very much uh, the, the heights are pretty much the same and the details match. However, it's uh, interestingly enough they are not. It, it is not the same. Um, it's not the same detail in any way, shape, or form because not detail uh, configuration. Let's call it like that because you have two small doors on each side, which indicate that they are, in fact, flats. So you come in and you go, you have different flats. But the, the houses are built exactly the same. Right? They, they're designed and the, de the outside details are, are the same. But over here, you have these two doors, so there's different uh, entrances. And it's not just a big house, a big townhouse like this one. Um, it's, a, it, it's actually people, uh, people who, who, who live in different flats and different floors. With, with a very narrow interest for, for each. Not narrow, short, especially when you compare it to the, to the one next door. You can really see, this is more at the scale of that one. And it's a more, it's a, it's a, it's a more primitive example, if you can call it like that, because it's wrought iron and not, and not, um, not cast iron like the other ones. So basically, all of these houses are very, in, they're, they're, the beauty of this neighborhood is exactly like we're saying, the consistency in design and the different, all the different patterns and all the different alignments from, from streets. So keep, let's, keep, let's keep going and see if we find some more interesting examples. Of course, it, it's, this is another quite interesting thing which happens a lot, which is a, this garden is kind of a leftover space because you have these streets which are very regular at the same time they're radial and so what do you do with with the space that that's left over from from all these bizarre angles so you fill it with gardens palm trees were very in vogue in the 19th century here so people would bring them over and they, they would just develop along fine now as we cross down we're going south right now. We'll come back to this avenue later. As you can see, a lot of there's a lot of new ugly buildings from the 80s and 70s when there was no um, there were no building restrictions whatsoever. So a lot of developers already tried to 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 build here at at the time. But we still have charming examples like these, again with a garden <clears throat> at one of the corners. Interestingly, as we go south, um, the houses become somewhat smaller and sparser. Uh, we have some examples like this one, which is a corner house, which is quite big and imposing with, with the two chimneys. Uh, and you can see there's more, more, of, a <clears throat> more of a pretense here with, with uh, details and glazing and so on. But also, as we, as we go, down houses become a little more humble like these let's keep going 
and they were in fact um, such a like especially these this, this example is quite interesting um, I don't know why it's all blurred but it's a it's a, it's really all done at the same time <clears throat> I know for a fact that these were meant to be uh, warehouses and not houses <laughs> for people but they're all linked in now um, and you can see that the detailing is much more simple it's less classical in a way it has this it has this these um, all these arches which were, were added so it's a little bit more um, uh, eclectic let's call it like that everything is covered in tiles and and all everything is a little uh, different and what's interesting I'm going to pull out from here is you can see all of these houses are bordering the, the cemetery which is one of the which is the biggest or one of the biggest cemeteries in, in Porto close to the river so in fact part of the land that this developer bought was adjacent to the cemetery and so uh, these lots when you look at them from this side they're all completely irregular and there isn't much of a garden or, or anything it's whatever is left over so uh, at the time they this street was developed as sort of oops oh jesus <laughs> okay this street was developed sort of as a more let's call it pre-industrial area with um with all these warehouses and and, and stores and so on but over time it's it's actually been it, it became actually a little a little street filled with uh, actually with with uh, car auto repair shops and this, this was a, <laughs> this is a radiator store so little very small micro industries um, with with their with their owners living upstairs it's still to this day it it, it still happens uh, so you have you know car wash but also very small industries and, and little little workshops on the ground floor and it's interesting that you can see that it, because they are a little also a little later in the day they all have these garage doors all of them which is something you wouldn't see before before you have your sort of classical townhouse um, beautiful classical and here you have the house above with um, some some nice uh, details in stone and whatnot, but very much more modest in scale. And then you have you have these garages, which which were something new at the time. <clears throat> we're heading south down the river, down to the river. And as we the further we go, the more we start seeing these sorts of things. So these gates lead into what is hard to see. Let me see if I can pull it up from above. Okay, so that is actually, you can see that you have two houses here, but you have houses over there too. Now these are, these are really were workers house, housing, um, which were essentially facing each other on a very narrow street. And this side of Porto is full of, with, of that. <clears throat> That's a topic for another lecture, but it really is um, one of the one of the most interesting and sort of tragic uh, sort of characteristics in, in Porto is that as as the as the industrial revolution came about, workers were housed in these very uh, precarious conditions with with very small houses. Now nowadays they're all being restored for. You know, Airbnbs and whatnot, but at the time they were everyone was very cramped in, in very small quarters, and everyone facing each other. <clears throat> so again, um, on the other side, this is interesting. You see, uh, this, these are some interesting compositions. They're very eclectic. They're, they're not trying to follow any particular style. Uh, these actually have the wider. The houses are wider. They have a garage in the center and two doors, um, and you can see there's a they're, each of them are compositions in their own way. So going down. Mm 
Now, that is another one of what I think is an interesting example. This is a later example, I'm sure, because the detailing is, suggests the 1930s or 40s. Um, but it is a building with what seems to be um, four apartments. So there's two entrances and one apartment per floor, and then each has their own garage. Now, it's not what it is right now, but I'm sure that, that was the point at the time. Uh, and uh, it, is a, it is a very, very interesting uh, facade, as we, can, as we can see in the middle, in the middle of this. And as we come up, which is going around the, the neighborhood right now, you can see some areas still retain the, um, all the verticality, the, the three bay facade, which we've saw, seen before. But now you have, again, you have the more, much more open ground floor with the, with the, with the garages. Some of them are actually quite detailed and rich looking like that, like that and that. Uh, you, you could see some people have uh, either more money or more were willing to invest more in their in their houses uh, than others, but they're they're all equally charming to me at least. That is another here is another very interesting example. In fact, this street is just beautiful. Um, so this is a row of houses. They're all they're all very much they're all the same up, up to here. They all use the same tiles, the same uh, transom details in wrought iron, which is very nice. And they and they have this thing, which is quite unusual, having a balcony on the upper store story with um, with these separators, which are qu quite wonderful. And I think they're they even in wood or sheet metal, but I, I would say they're, they're in probably in wood. And as we keep going, you have this garden with this house, which has been a much more interesting house. Now it's been renovated and sort of badly restored, but it was, the house had the same tiles, and it was exactly the same, the same style. And we, we once uh, visited this house. Let's see if we can see actually. No, 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 no. Yeah, there, I'm not sure we can see this as it was before. Ah, here. Let's look at it in 2009. Ah, see, much more interesting. In fact, this whole tour would have been much more interesting in 2009, where you can see, yes, where you can see the the original state of the house with um, with these sort of with these wood windows, which is everything was very um, everything was very much more artistical and developed, and now all of that detail is gone, especially this back porch, which was really wonderful with these tiles and and whatnot. But everything is kind of now and dead, and and they they even replaced all the tiles and put new tiles to look like these, but they're not glazed properly, so they look awful. Um, but this is sort of a more, and it was <laughs> it was for sale, of course. Um, and across, it's funny. Another one. Okay, let's look at, that's actually an interesting example. Okay, we're back to. We're back to current days. So it's an interesting example where the two houses were built across from each other. They're different. Let's go back to 2009, where everything was falling apart. So the houses are different, but they share some um, some details and some interesting quirks, like the like all of these curves. It's a little bit Art Nouveau, just a little bit. Uh, not enough, but uh, you can see that the tiles, they all have a border around. Same here. They have these bands of stone separating the floors. Um, and both have these wonderful gardens. 
out face, facing the street, out into the street, uh, which weren't really very private, but it, it was probably the only room they could get. The same thing it was here. That's, that was the garden. Uh, so it, it, it creates this wonderful atmosphere in the, in the street. Okay, and I would like to end because I realize it's been been talking for too long now. With this is the main avenue, which is one of the main arteries in town, and I just wanted to show. It's not exactly part of this part of this anymore, but it shows the type of houses that existed here when um, when our developer friend had bought the adjacent land. And so as you can see, you can see a person here. You can see the, the, the heights of windows and everything. Now this, today, I think most of them, most of these are sort of restored. Not completely, but, but they, they look better. Back in 2009, they were a little bit ramshackle. I think they were more uh, charming, but you know, can't can't make people live like that. So, uh, what's interesting really is the scale of the things. So these these were individual houses, but they were built like manor houses, uh, and the, the you know the ceiling heights really are big and spacious, and everything is um, everything is wonderful and wonderfully detailed and rich, which is uh, <clears throat> interesting. So people would live here and then just walk downtown. To, to their offices or their shops or, or, their, um, or their workplaces. So some of these were really very, very ornate with, with a massive floor and so on. Um, and so we reached the end of our tour. Let me see. Yeah, we can barely make out the Faculty of Fine Arts, let me see. Not much, not much change today. This is still open. It's, it's beautiful inside, and we end in this with this note, this beautiful alleyway of trees. Uh, I hope you liked it. I hope it was okay. It was our first one. Um, let's see if we can keep going. Um, this is uh, again, this is an idea of Intbal, which is a charity and, a, and a, an organization sponsored by the Prince of Wales in England. I hope you follow it. Uh, there should be more videos of these from all over the world in the Intibal website. And so keep following and thanks for thanks for watching. Bye bye.